Hi folks, it's Mike Murphy. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to enable the PG vector extension to turn your Neon Postgres databases into a vector database. So you can store and search vector embeddings, which are required when you are building RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation Systems. In this tutorial, first, we will enable the PG vector extension using the Neon SQL editor. Then we will create a table to store text and vector embeddings. Next, we will add a vector index. This is going to make similarity searches faster, especially as your tables grow. We will then test everything by inserting some sample data and running a search query. The prerequisites for enabling the PG vector extension. We must have a Neon account with a project set up. I will leave a link in the description so you can create a free account on Neon and get started setting up a project and a Neon Postgres database. If you haven't already set up a Neon Postgres database, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch my tutorial where I walk you through step by step on how to set up a new Postgres database on Neon. Step one, we're gonna open the SQL editor in your Neon project dashboard. And the SQL editor is very similar to the terminal or the command line interface. Open a web browser, go to neon.com, click on login to log in to your Neon dashboard. Make sure you have your organization selected, click projects in the sidebar, then click to open the project where you created your Neon Postgres database. I want the production branch selected. That's where I created my database. Then I'm gonna click on SQL editor. Now I don't wanna view all these old queries. So I'll just click on saved where I currently don't have any saved queries. The PG vector extension is enabled per database. So when you're in the SQL editor, make sure you select the database that you want to enable PG vector on. If you have multiple databases or if you create new databases in the future, you will need to enable the PG vector extension on each database. Step two, we're doing it. We're going to enable the PG vector extension. And all we have to do is simply enter a little snippet of code in the SQL editor. I will leave a link to this support article in the description. But you'll see in the first step, enable the PG vector extension, it uses that snippet create extension vector, and it doesn't have the if not exists. So I just didn't want you to get confused if you're trying to follow along, you're saying, why does this say this, yet you're recommending something else. The simpler snippet used in the Neon documentation and the one that we're using with this if not exists both have the same purpose, and that is to enable the PG vector extension. The main difference with the simpler Neon documentation version, if you had already enabled the PG vector extension, maybe you forgot you enabled it. Well, if it's already enabled, this one is going to generate an error message. And that error message might confuse you, might be annoying, or might just be a little bit of a waste of time. And the second one is going to enable the PG vector extension on the database if it doesn't already exist. And if it is already enabled, it is just going to silently skip the request. I am in my project dashboard. I have the production branch selected. I have the SQL editor open. I'm going to select the database that I want to enable PG vector on. I'm going to click plus for a new query that clears out the SQL editor window. So now I can enter in that snippet. I'm just gonna paste it in command V. We're just saying that we want to create or enable the extension if it doesn't already exist. Then the name of the extension is vector, which is short for PG vector. And now I'm just gonna click run. Statement executed successfully. That is all it takes to enable the PG vector. And now your Postgres database is basically a vector database or it's enabled so you can now store vector embeddings for a RAG system. Pretty cool. Step three, we're gonna verify and confirm that the PG vector extension is enabled. I'll copy this little snippet of code and go back to the SQL editor. Now the SQL editor works very much like a notepad. 
So you don't have to create a new query for each new command that you use, but you want to make sure that at the end of each command, there is a semicolon and you can add spaces in between the commands. So I'm just going to click my cursor at the end of that first command. I'll tap return a couple times and I'll just paste in that second command. You can also add comments, which is a great way to keep things organized. It also helps you remember in the future what each of the commands do to add comments. I'll go to this top line here, tap return, put two dashes. So dash dash, I'll put a space. Everything after the two dashes is going to be ignored. So I'm just going to put in enable PG vector extension. I'll go down to the second line, dash dash space. Now I'll put verify PG extension. And to run commands, when you have multiple commands, what you do is select what you want to run. So with the command selected, then you click the run key. If it returns something that verifies or confirms that the PG vector extension is enabled. Nice work. Step four is the centerpiece of a RAG system. And it is the reason why we enabled the PG vector extension as in step four, we're going to create a table to store all of the text and the vector embeddings. This is the vector store. Now I'm going to copy all of this and anything after the two dashes is just a comment. So command C, I'll tap return a couple times and press command V to paste. So this first line is saying that we're going to create a new table and the new table name is documents. If you want to call it something else, just change it here. This line right here is super common in SQL tables. It's just going to automatically generate a new ID number for each row, saving you from having to manually add IDs. The context text is the original or the raw text that gets converted into vector embeddings. And we store both the original text and the vector embeddings in our vector store. Metadata is where you're going to store all of the optional info, things like titles, tags, authors. Timestamp is just going to automatically create a timestamp when the row is added. The most important thing to be aware of in this step is right here, embedding vector. This number right here is going to change depending on the large language model or the LLM that you are using. So you really have to pay attention to this one as this number needs to match the dimension given by the large language model that you are using. All of these are columns and this embedding column is the column that is actually using the PG vector extension. 1536 is the dimension used in the very popular open AI embedding models and definitely do some homework on embedding models as the higher the dimension number, the more expensive it's going to be. Now you're going to get better quality with a higher dimension. So you want to find a balance between getting good quality and keeping the dimension number as low as possible. It is time to create the table that is going to store all of our vectors. This is going to be our vector store in the RAG system. Before I do that, I'm going to come over here and click on tables. So I just want to point out that I currently just have one table called MMU for Mike Murphy Unplugged episodes. This is going to be for all of my podcast episodes. I'll go back to the SQL editor. I'm going to select or highlight the entire command and then press the run button to create our new table called documents. We'll go back to tables and if everything worked correctly, we should have a new table called documents with five columns, I'll go back to tables and bingo. There is our documents vector store. If you look at the headers at the top, exactly as we created it, perfect. Let's go back to the SQL editor. Now we have some additional things that we're gonna add here, but I'm gonna go ahead and save our progress as I don't wanna lose this query as this is something you might reuse over and over again. We have it nice and neat here. So I wanna make sure that I preserve it. So to save a query, just click save and give it a name. Enable PG vector plus vector store. Click save. Now it's gonna be in the save tab. And you can just click it and open it up. 
you can rename it or delete a saved history. But now we know that we have this saved, so we don't have to worry about it. In step five, we're going to add a vector index. This is going to really speed up similarity search as a vector index works like a library card catalog. So the database can quickly jump to the exact thing it's looking for without having to go through everything line by line. To add a vector index, I'm gonna copy this code and notice at the top, it already has a comment added to it. Command C to copy. I'll jump back to Neon. I'm in the SQL editor. I'm on this last command after the semicolon. I'll tap the return key a couple times to make some space. Command V to paste. So it's got the comment on the top. So I'm keeping my query nice and organized. I'm gonna select all of this and I'm going to run it. The reason that we're getting this message at the bottom about little data is typically you're gonna get better performance if you add the vector index when you already have data in your tables. It is okay to add it as we're doing right now, but that's why you're seeing that message. And to finish up this tutorial, I am going to insert a test row of data and then run a similarity search. This is to give you a sense of how your new vector database is going to actually work inside of a real RAG system. When we created the documents table to store the text in the vector embeddings, we used the model dimension of 1536. Whatever embedding vector length you use in your table. So we use 1536. That means when you insert data, you must include exactly 1536 vectors or these individual numbers inside of the square brackets. For the sake of simplicity, so it's easier to understand the demo, I went ahead and created a new table called Documents Demo using the exact same steps that we just went over, only instead of making the embedding vector of 1536, I made it four. That way I only have to import the four vectors to show you how everything is gonna work. I'm going to select all of this test row data and copy it, Command C. I'll go back to the Neon console. I'm gonna click on tables just so you can see. Documents is the table that we created together with the 1536 embedding vectors and the documents demo table, I set up the exact same way, only I use the embeddings vector duration of four. And if you're wondering, how do you check or how do you know what vector dimension you use in which table? I have the original documents table selected that we created together and if I go to the embedding vector column, you will see in parentheses the embedding dimension of 1536. And if I select the copy, the documents demo, you will see that embedding vector is four. I've got this sample data copied to my clipboard. I'll go back to the neon dashboard. I'm in the SQL editor. I'm gonna click plus to create a new blank query so I don't mix it with the one that we saved. I'm gonna paste in that sample data. This is going to insert one record or one row into the table called documents demo. This is the original or the source text that we wanna eventually be able to use an LLM to work with. And these are the vector embeddings that correspond with the original text. I'm going to select everything and press run to insert that record into our documents demo table and to confirm that the test data was inserted as a row in the documents demo table. I'll go back to tables, make sure the documents demo table is selected and bingo. There is our test data inserted as a record in our vector store. The similarity search is going to look for text that is similar in meaning to the vector embeddings. And for this test, we just have the four vectors and we are storing the vectors in our table that is called documents demo. And the reason that we are able to store these vector embeddings is because we enabled the PG vector extension. This is exactly how it works in a real RAG system. Let's say that you want to create an AI powered knowledge base around your podcast. Well, first you take all of your podcast transcripts and you chunk them up into smaller pieces. You then run all of those chunked pieces of text through an embedding model, and the embedding model converts all of that text into numbers or vector embeddings. You then take all of the text and all of the vectors 
and you store them in a special database, a database that is called a vector store because it can store vectors. And that is what we just did with our Postgres database. We converted it into a vector store by enabling the PG vector extension. You then run a query or search. Maybe I ask, how many of my podcast episodes did I mention Adobe After Effects? The database looks for text that is similar in meaning to the vectors. Instead of having to do it record by record, because we add the vector index, that is going to speed up the process. Once it finds what it's looking for, it's going to send over the query and the vectors to an LLM like ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini. In a matter of milliseconds, I will know how many episodes were about Adobe After Effects. Let's run a similarity search on our documents demo table. Command C, back to Neon, SQL editor, click, return a couple times, paste, command V. I'm going to select the command that I want to run or highlight it, click run, success. The similarity or the vector search was able to make a match between the text and the vectors, confirming that the Neon database is vector ready for AI applications and RAG systems. Nice work.